Don't touch that dial. You're listening to Board Games Daily, your daily dose of tabletop gaming discussion on Anchor. Now welcome your hosts, Jeremiah Isley, Scott Firestone, and AJ Skifstad. Hey everyone, welcome back to Board Games Daily. I'm Jeremiah. Thanks for tuning in for another day. We've got a big day here at Board Games Daily and Theology of Games. So let's get into this show. I'm just going to tell you a couple things real quick that you need to know. One, we're going to talk more about The Mind, which is a cool game from Pandasaurus Rex. And (laughs) Pandasaurus, I think it's just Pandasaurus Games. I don't know what I just said there. Also, we've got this week's game night cage fight, including the results of last week's cage fight, which was a slaughter, by the way. And uh, what we've got other things. Actually, I've got some really cool information about the contest that we are hosting that you really, really want to know about. So stay tuned for all that and more coming up on today's episode of Board Games Daily. Let's go. Okay, everybody, it's it's time to give you the lowdown on this contest. So here's the deal. We are actually hosting this through our friends over at the Giveaway Geek. So you can either just go to their homepage and find it there, or I've got a cool landing page set up on theologyofgames.com. So if you go to theologyofgames.com and just click on the button there, there's just this cool landing page comes up. There's a button that will take you right to the contest. And you can enter there. There's a ton of different ways you can enter uh, by sharing tweets about our podcasts, about follow. You can follow us. You can like us. You can. uh, There's just a, a ton of different ways. All of these things will get you more and more entries into the contest. Again, the contest is from our good friends at Gameland Games. They are providing us with a a deluxe edition copy of all of the tiny epic games except for tiny epic mechs which is not yet available but everything from here uh tiny epic kingdoms to tiny epic zombies plus they're throwing in one of their cool game hall bags it's a custom bag that'll fit all of your tiny epic needs this is a wonderful prize that is worth three hundred dollars that's right if you went out and bought all of these games retail price plus the bag you would be dropping $300. All you have to do, though, is enter this contest for your chance to win, and it's going to be amazing. So we're super excited about that. That contest will be live by the time you hear this because (laughs) we're not publishing this episode until it's live. So you'd never never fear. You're not going to waste any time. There will be a link also in the show notes. So you will be... um, You'll be able to do that. Just click in the show notes. It'll take you right to the contest. Or like I said, just go to theologyofgames.com and you'll be able to find it there. So get in on it. Big thanks to our friends again at Gameland Games and uh, good luck to you. Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to Board Games Daily, powered by Theology of Games. This is AJ Skifstad, and I'm going to talk about some games I played over the weekend, which is not typical. Usually my weekends are loaded, and I'm sure you know, because yours probably are too. You don't get a lot of games to the table over the weekend, but I happened to get some to the table this weekend, and those games were Azul, Karuba, and The Mind, which is what I want to talk about today. I talked about it in a previous episode, but we may talk about it in a future episode. We may even do a uh, game night cage fight with it. So... The Mind, it, it was up for two, uh, 2018 Spiel des Jahr, and it did not win, but that's okay because it's still a very good game. It's made by Pandasaurus Games, and basically you have 100 cards in a deck, and depending on how many players are in the game, each player is going to get one card to start the round. And <clears throat> what you want to do is you want to play those cards sequentially. Now, because there's 100 cards, you are not going to have numbers 1 through 100 since you only have one card in your hand. What you want to do is try and play those cards uh, in order 
And it doesn't mean that you're going to go clockwise around the table and play. You just play when you think you're ready because there is no talking. There is like zero communication. You just have to play what you feel to be right. So the first player's thinking, okay, there's only four cards out and I have the number five. It's highly unlikely that anybody has the four, three, two, or one. So I'm going to go ahead and play my number five. Another player decides, okay, I'm going to play my number 15. Then we have somebody play a 35 and somebody plays a 92. And then you pass the first round uh, because you played all your cards and you played them correctly. Now it gets harder because when you go to level two, everybody gets two cards. This time there's more cards in the hand um, and there's more variability. Um, So you may be playing both your cards back to back. Let's say you have the five and the seven. You can only wait a split second to see if somebody has that six before you play that seven. Otherwise, somebody might go ahead and play a 12. And so you really just, it's its timing. It's getting a feel for the table. Um, you know, just kind of getting some, like, I don't know, visual communication going with people a little bit. It is a cool game. It sounds simple, and it sounds like its it's not going to be fun. There's not much to it because of the way it's described. But once you're actually playing it and you're sitting there in the moment, it is really quite cool. You have four lives, so it's okay if you go ahead and you mess up one or two times. Um, And then you're also going to get these throwing stars throughout the game that allow you as a team to collectively decide to uh, use a throwing star and remove your lowest card from your hand. This kind of tells you where everybody's at in their hand. So if you're at four cards, everybody has four cards in their hand and you do a throwing star, If somebody's lowest card that they have in their hand is a 70, well, you know that you're just going to wait and let them play when it's time. They're not going to be playing for a while. But that's the game in a nutshell. I think it's really cool. I think I could get tired of this game very quickly. Um, So fortunately, I do not own the game, and that means I probably won't be playing it regularly. So it'll probably stay pretty fresh for me. Uh, I like it a lot. If you haven't checked it out yet, check out The Mind by Pandasaurus Games. That's it for now. Check you later. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for this week's Game Night Cage Fight. And in this corner, two games enter and one game leaves. Who wins, you decide. Vote on this week's cage fight by going to Twitter at Board Games Daily or call in 216 352 3864. And still champion. All right, it is time for the cage fight. We are pitting two games against each other. We are talking about Hanabi by, I believe, R&R Games versus The Mind by Pandasaurus Games. I had mentioned we might talk about this, and I'm glad we are, um, because these games have some similarities and some differences. Let's talk similarities, and then let's talk some differences, and then I'll tell you which one wins for me. Similarities. These games were both up for Spiel des Jahr. Hanabi actually won Spiel des Jahr about three to five years back, and... Uh, the Mind, however, it was up in 2018. However, it did not win, but it's still a very good game. More similarities. Uh, in Hanabi, cards are hidden from you. Other players know what they are. In the, uh, in the Mind, cards are hidden from other players. The idea remains the same. There is some knowledge not known amongst players. Cards are hidden. And finally, the last similarity is in Hanabi, you're trying to play the cards sequentially. One, two, three, four, five. And in the mind, you are also playing to trying to play cards in a sequential order or just an order that they would come because they can't actually be literally sequential, but uh, because there's 100 cards in the deck, uh, maybe 1, 10, 35, and 80. Um, so those are some similarities, some differences, big differences. In Hanabi, there's actual knowledge about the cards in your hand. There is never a point where you have solid, like, super solid knowledge about the cards in people's hands. You have the only knowledge you know in the mind, uh, if you use a throwing star, is cards that people have above their lowest card. 
because they're going to discard their lowest card, you'll know that they're, they're going to have some sort of card above their lowest card, but you still have no perfect information. In Hanabi, you do, however. Also, in Hanabi, you're dealing with colors and numbers, and in the mind, you're only dealing with numbers. Those are some differences. So, which one comes out on top for me? Well, I have to be honest. I am really spent on Hanabi right now. Really not enjoying that game. Played it way too much. The mind is fresh. The mind is cool. I played it several times. But Hanabi is still going to be the winner for me because I believe the mind is just too luck based. And that's okay. That's okay. It, it, it's fun and I enjoy it. Um, but overall, I want to play a game where I have some perfect knowledge about what I can play next and what I can do next. I like the fact that there's a little bit more communication. There is actually a ton more communication in Hanabi. And the mind, there is no communication. It's all timing and kind of reading people's facial expressions without them getting overboard on facial expressions. Otherwise, you're just kind of cheating. Um, so I think I think right now, like I like the mind better, but that's just because I'm spent on Hanabi. But I think if I played the mind as much as I played Hanabi, I would like Hanabi way more. And so I give this cage fight to Hanabi. That's who wins for me. Who wins for you? We want to find out. That's it for now. Check you later. All right, here we go. Here's, I, I'm just going to give it to you straight. Last week we, we had our cage fight and it didn't go so well for one of the games. We put Cthulhu Realms up against Star Realms and it was a bloodbath. Cthulhu Realms didn't stand a chance. It's like 93% of the vote went towards <laughs> towards Star Realms. I kind of saw that one coming. Star Realms is wildly popular and it's a great game. So there it is. That's last week's game night cage fight results. Of course, we've got the new one rolling. So you want to make sure you get in on that. Go to at board games daily for our Twitter poll. Check out theology of games on Facebook and you can hear you can vote there. Of course, you can always plead your case. You can hype up your fighter by going by calling 216-352-3864 or using the snazzy little voice message feature within the Anchor app. Who you got this week? Let us know. You it's uh, Hanabi versus the Mind. Let's go. <laughs> All right, guys, Jeremiah dropping in with my winner of this week's Game Night Cage Fight. Honestly, this is a tough one. I really like Hanabi. I think it was deserving of winning the spiel a few years ago when it did. I think it's a fun, interesting, cool kind of co-op game. But the mind is also very interesting to me. It To me, it's like a co-op social deduction game. And I think it's I think it's a really interesting study on how well you know the people you play with um, or how well you kind of read their signs and pick up on their tells and things like that. So I, I I'm having a hard time with this one. I maybe because I've just played it more recently. And I think I'm gonna I'm gonna pick the mind for this week, although it's a very very close race for me, but the mind, I, I really, I'm a big social deduction fan and I think it has more intrigue to me. One thing I wish it did. I wish it played more than four players. I wish you could play like six or seven. Cause I really think, boy, that would be something else. Maybe it'd be just too chaotic. I don't know, but I'm going to go with the mind this week knowing that uh, I really enjoy Hanabi as well. So I'm not sliding either game this week. I just, I think the mind may, may just pick it up just a, a little tick more than, than Hanabi for me. So there it is. Who wins it for you? Let us know. Go to Twitter and Facebook. You can vote on our polls there. And you can always call in and plead your case. Hype up your fighter by calling 216-352-3864. And we'll be back with more Board Games Daily coming at you real quick. You can be
be more than just a listener. If you're listening via the Anchor app, you can be a part of the discussion by using the voice message feature. Don't just sit on the sidelines. Download the app and join the conversation today. Well, what do you know? That's going to do it. Yeah, that's it for another day here on Board Games Daily. Thanks so much for tuning in. Don't forget the contest. Head over to TheologyOfGames.com. There's a cool button there that'll take you to the page and all the different ways you can enter there. Please, please share the word on this one. It's a great, great contest. Big shout out to our friends at Gameland Games for providing this amazing prize for us. And if you want to get every tiny epic game there is in its deluxe version, which means very, very cool upgraded components for all of those games, plus that really cool game haul, you can get in on the contest. So do it, do it, do it right away. Don't delay. Uh, <laughs> I'm a poet. I wasn't aware. So I want to thank you for listening. Don't forget, get out there, share the word, share the show, let people know about it. And for my co-hosts, AJ Skifstad and Scott Firestone, I'm Jeremiah Isley. And until next week, or not next week, oh my goodness, until Wednesday, I say you should go play some games. Thanks for joining us today. Board Games Daily is powered by TheologyOfGames.com. Don't forget to head over to TheologyOfGames.com to check out all we have to offer, including written reviews, our YouTube channel, and two other podcasts. If you enjoyed this show, don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review us on iTunes, Google Play, or wherever you're listening. Thanks for listening, and go put a game on the table.